Things just got a little bit extreme around here, brothers. With an extreme six. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, ladies and gentlemen. This is Brian coming back to you guys today with a review of the X99 Extreme 6 motherboard from ASRock. Now this motherboard definitely comes as a pleasant surprise to me, considering the amount of headaches I've had with other X99 motherboards in the past few months. And ultimately, I'm going to be recommending this motherboard today because it's just feature packed, it's got a lot of utility, and it just works properly. Uh, so anyway, before we get onto a conclusion, we'll look at the physical overview of the motherboard, then we'll look at the features, then we'll go through the BIOS, have a little look at that. I'll, do a, I'll even do a mic test for you guys and talk about the audio, and then we'll get onto the conclusion. So let's move on. So as soon as you get this motherboard, you'll notice that it comes packaged extremely well, all pun intended. It comes with enough accessories, all your SATA cables, you even get a two and three way SLI bridge connections there. Uh, however, looking at the motherboard from top to bottom, we can see we start at the top here, we've got a big chunky heatsink with X99 written across the top there, that's blue and silver writing on top. However, upon taking off this heatsink, we could clearly see that ASRock have implemented a really good VRM on this motherboard. We've got a 12 phase, well it looks like an 8 plus 2 plus 2 phase design there. Two phases being for the right side four dims, uh, two phases being for the left side two dim, uh, four dims there, and eight phases being dedicated to the CPU itself. So upon closer inspection of the VRM, we can see, and to my delight, we've got Nichicon 12K caps here. These are platinum caps and they're rated at 12,000 hours under extreme conditions. Pretty much the best in the business. We've also got 60 amp chokes there. And upon closer inspection of the MOSFETs, you'll actually notice that even though it looks like a single MOSFET design, underneath the layer there, you've got a dual MOSFET packed into one MOSFET. So essentially you've got 24 MOSFETs flowing across this 12 phase power design. Uh, looking at the dims there, we've got four dims on the right, as I mentioned earlier, four dims on the left. Uh, continuing on the left here, we've got two USB front out headers. We've also got a chassis fan, and on the note of chassis fans, we've got four here, located from two at the bottom and two in the middle. Uh, that'll give you a total of four uh, fans on the chassis and system fans. And at the top here, we've got a three and four pin CPU fan connection. So a total of six fan connections or six fan out headers on this motherboard. Also on the middle fan point there, you'll notice a PCI Express Molex connection there to give these PCI Express ports a little bit extra power. Uh, really good if you're going with three-way or two-way SLI. Uh, also on the left here, you've got an ATX24 pin connection there located in a pretty good spot. Above that, you've got a USB 2 port. So I don't know who would benefit from this, maybe me, uh, even though I've got my front uh, USB port out still there. So maybe for someone who hasn't got front USB 2 or 3 out and they're on a test bed and they can't get access to their rear USB outs, I guess that would make a really good uh, solution for you if you're that rare person. Uh, though besides that, we've got the 12 volt CPU pin located again in a really good spot as well. So moving down the motherboard here, we've got 10 SATA 3 ports here all on the same one controller. So they've gone away with using different controllers as you might be used to in the past, like an Intel or an AS Media controller. And they've just gone with the one Intel controller there. Besides that, we've got the ASRock heatsink and the logo uh, cooling the platform chipset hub, which is connected via a thermal pad. Uh, that's what they've used for the thermal interface material. And besides that, we've got the Dr. Debug LED, uh, which is a nice test bed feature or debugging for anyone having problems. I like that addition. Uh, you've got there some test bed features here, the power button and reset button, as well as a HDD saver connection there. Uh, even though personally, I don't use it and I probably wouldn't recommend using it. And then besides here, you've got your front panel outs here, your power LED, HDD light, and your speaker, etc. Besides that, moving to the right here, we've got our chassis fans, as we mentioned before. We've got our front out USB 2 ports. And then we've got a BIOS selection switch, which is actually really good. I mean, I like that you can select it. So if you come into a bad BIOS flash, you can then quickly change it and then flash the bad BIOS again, and you're back in business. So I like that feature. I also like that you've got an actual manual clear CMOS jumper here as well for those people without a screwdriver. <laughs> and then besides that, we've got a COM port out and a Thunderbolt out as well. So upon closer inspection here, we can see they've got the Purity Sound 2, and I don't think the name honestly doesn't do it enough justice, because upon closer inspection, we've got Nichicon caps, which are really good. You've got a, a TI Texas Instruments, dedicated headphone amplifier, which is the NE5532. You've also got the Realtek 1150 as well, 
which has really low uh, signal to noise ratios. That's all shielded with an EMI shield. And they've also separated the audio from the rest of the PCB to reduce noise again. So the audio solution is really good as you'll hear later with the mic in test. So not only have they got the headphone out really good, they've got the mic in port really good as well to keep noise down. So for someone like me, this onboard audio solution is actually really good. So moving on into the middle of the board here, we've got three PCIe 3.0 16 speed slots here with the first and second slot being spaced out considerably well. Uh, that's good if you're going with a dual SLI air-cooled configuration there. However, it's a bit difficult if you're going with maybe a water-cooled setup or something like that. So uh, looking to the side of that, you've got PCI 2 one-speed slots there. You've also got an Ultra M2 slot there for an SSD as well. You've also got your CMOS battery there, and you've also got your dual BIOS chips right there. Below that, you've got a PCIe Mini, I believe. And then let's move on now to the rear of the motherboard. So moving on to the back here, from the top to the bottom, we've got two USB 2 outs, we've got a PS2 out, below that we've got a clear CMOS button, which in my opinion is an absolute necessity on the X99 platform, considering every CPU on this platform is overclockable. Below that we've got two USB 3 ports, below that we've got an eSATA out, Below that, we've got a Qualcomm Atheros Ethernet out, or NIC. And then besides that, we've got two USB 3 outs. Below that again, we've got two USB 3 outs. And besides that, we've got an Intel NIC, or a Gigabit Ethernet out. So you've got two NICs on this solution. I really like that. Uh, below that, we've got a mic in, line in, and headphone out. I love this solution, being someone who uses it and records a lot. Uh, you've also got manual 5.1 analog out there, as well as an optical out, which apparently supports up to 7.1 channel audio as well. Now, another thing to mention about this as well is all these components here are guarded with ASRock's uh, spike protection as well, which they claim. I actually can't test this because I don't have a lightning bolt on my hands. But anyway, with that being said, that's a physical overview of the motherboard. Let's move along now to the actual uh, look at the BIOS and we'll look at the software that comes included. I'll do a mic test, talk about the audio and talk about a few extra features with this motherboard. Then we'll move on to a conclusion. So let's take a quick look in the ASRock UEFI Extreme 6 BIOS here, the X99. We can see here that it's feature packed. It has everything that I would personally want from a BIOS uh, CPU configuration. You've got there all the core ratios, you've got individual core ratios. You've also got the B-clock strap there as well, different filters and spread settings. Uh, DRAM configuration, again, it's pretty intricate. You've got all the things you could want. I mean, the voltages there as well, set different voltages on adaptive mode, etc. Voltage mode, you can put your CPU input voltage as well and different other voltages there. So you've also got five configurations and profiles that you can save to the BIOS. Uh, and going on to advance, you've got more settings there. Uh, tools, even more settings. Now, one thing I will point out that I like about this is, is you can, if you've got an internet connection from a router or something, you can just pretty much flash the BIOS without having to do anything. Just click internet flash, and it'll download the latest BIOS for you and flash it. So that's a really cool feature that I like about the ASRock motherboards. You got your hardware monitor there, security options, your boot options there as well, and then you can exit, save changes, and exit as well. Okay, so let's move on now to some power consumption figures here and some benchmarks for you guys. So I decided to run a quick Cinebench uh, test here with the Gigabyte X99 UD4, and then I ran it with the Extreme 6, all other hardware being the same, all clocks on the RAM and CPU being the same. And as you see, the ASRock Extreme 6, I'll just pull up the direct benchmark scores for you there, it won by just a little bit. There was nothing much in it there. They performed pretty much identical, though the ASRock Extreme 6 did win by a very slight amount there, and that could be put down to variance. Uh, however, moving on now to power consumption, this is what... Uh, bothers me a little bit about the Extreme 6. The Gigabyte X99 UD4 used up about 320 watts at 4 gigs and then when we contrast that overclock to the Extreme 6 that's using up about 380 watts from the wall. Keep in mind this is on an 85 percent efficient power supply or a bronze rated power supply. Uh, if you had a better rated power supply these figures would be a bit lower but it's still worth mentioning that the, X, the uh, Extreme 6 
uh, uses up more power than the X99 UD4. Also on idle, it was using up around about 15 watts more than the UD4 as well. Uh, compared to the X99 Slide Plus off the top of my head, the overclock figures are a little bit worse than the X99 Slide Plus as well. So maybe that dual MOSFET design isn't as good as it seems or it's good for temperatures, but it's not good for power consumption, because I believe off the top of my head, the more MOSFETs you have, or the faster the MOSFETs switch, the cooler they will indeed stay. However, the more power is wasted when the switch is going, or when the MOSFET switches from one to another. That's just what I believe. Maybe some experts can chime in here. But So maybe that dual uh, MOSFET design, although it keeps the temperatures down, it might be a bit of a detriment in terms of power consumption. So let's move on now to onboard audio, and you're probably wondering why I'm talking on this mic over my studio mic, and the reason is I wanted to show you how little hiss or how little noise there was on the mic in. Uh, as you guys can see here, I'm just using the levels of 60 and plus 30 dB gain with no noise suppression. And so what this means is if you probably did this on a normal motherboard, you'd probably get a lot of hiss coming through. There's absolutely no hiss coming through. Uh, really good job. They've done a really good job on the mic in and the line in as well. Uh, onto the actual headphone out. When I did a uh, crosstalk test and I just turned the volume to max and then I uh, just put my left ear on there and the right channel's playing and you just listen really carefully. If you can hear noise coming through the left channel, that's crosstalk. It's basically when noise leaks from one channel to the other. There was basically none on this onboard on audio solution, or barely audible at all, just like the Andes E07K that I recently reviewed. So awesome job, ASRock's done an awesome job on the onboard audio solution this time around, really good job there. Anyway, with that being said, let's move on to a conclusion where I'll sum up some of the things that I like and some of the things that I don't like about this motherboard. So in conclusion, what can I say about the ASRock X99 Extreme 6? Well, a lot of good, that's for sure. I mean, first of all, it works. It's an X99 motherboard that works, and it works well. It runs cool, my overclocks don't crash once this. Once I've found my stable overclocks, they don't crash, the motherboard doesn't crash at random, unlike the X99 UD4 from Gigabyte that I got here. Uh, it doesn't blow up like the MSI Slide Plus motherboard that I had come through, and doesn't get contaminated like that either. So all in all, the Extreme 6 just works. It's a solid motherboard. Uh, let's look at the good side of things though. The onboard audio solution, it's phenomenal. I don't need my Andes E07K anymore. I just bought that and I was enjoying it. And then I tried this onboard audio solution and I can go sell the Andes now because I don't need it. It's useless now because this has such low crosstalk as well. Uh, the mic in was really good as well. Uh, the functionality of the board, and I like the fact that ASRock's gone with function over fanciness. Uh, instead of implementing fancy LEDs on the board, They've given you the clear CMOS button, power reset buttons, dual NICs, uh, things that make sense. And that's a really good thing as well. Another thing I will point out that I didn't point out earlier in the video was the they put a sapphire black soldering mask coat on there. And I personally, I prefer this over the matte black coat that a lot of motherboard manufacturers have been using. I mean, some people will like the matte black uh, coat and that's, that's, I mean, that's awesome for you. But for me, it's like synonymous with cheap. I mean, I used to drift cars, and when you crashed your car, what did you paint your car with? Matte black paint, if, you're, if you didn't have money to fix it. So matte black to me is kind of synonymous with cheap. That's just with me. Okay, so now we looked at some of the positives. Let's look at some of the negatives and some of the things I think that could be improved on with the Extreme 6. And the first thing is the power consumption. As you guys saw there, it was quite a bit behind the UD4, and it was a little bit behind the SLI Plus as well from memory. So maybe the dual MOSFET design, even though it keeps temperatures down, it might be working against ASRock in that it's making the board a little less efficient. Uh, so that's something maybe the ASRock might want to think about in the future, maybe going with a different MOSFET design. Because I think the Gigabyte UD4 has the most efficient uh, implementation of a VRM out there at the moment. Also, the idle temps suggested this as well. It was, it was hovering around about 15 watts more than the UD4 and a little bit higher than the X99 SLI Plus as well. So something ASRock might want to look into, though it may have to do with the BIOS settings too. As you saw there, even when I fixed my voltage at 1.1 volt, it was still going up to 1.15 volt. Like it was giving it a 50 millivolt overvolt with fixed mode. So that's something that ASRock, you guys might want to look into. Maybe the BIOS uh, needs a bit of a rework in terms of the uh, voltage settings there. I'm not too sure. 
uh, but mine because mine was 50 millivolt overvolt. So anyway, okay. The next thing's more of a personal thing. It's more of a subjective thing. Some people might look like the look of the Extreme Six. However, I found it to be a little bit tacky. Like things like the clip, or the clips on the dim slots, they were white. I thought they should have been color coded to blue and black. Uh, another thing like the silver badging on the uh, heat sinks, the X99 and the ASRock, I thought that was a little bit weird. I thought it should have been printed on, uh, a little bit less subtle, or a little bit more subtle, sorry. Uh, and another thing as well is the blue and black. I think it does, it didn't really do it for me. I think, uh, you know, instead of going with the in-between, just go with a really simple look like the all black, like the SLI Plus, or go full out fancy rainbow LEDs because... In terms of functionality and utility, the, X, the Extreme 6 is the best board I've had come through here out of the X99 series. However, in terms of looks, it's the worst. So you guys might want to have a little uh, look at the look of this board and maybe change some colors up a little bit there. As opposed to the marketing, I mean the Extreme, right? I've had the Z77, the uh, Ivy Bridge. I had the Extreme 4. And when I got that, it's sort of uh, imprinted in my memory that, hey, the Extreme logo or the Extreme brand means good onboard audio, good, good NIC, good overclocker. Though the Extreme 6 has phenomenal onboard audio. It has a phenomenal NIC. It has a really good BIOS. I can't test if it overclocks because as you guys know, my Haswell eCPU lost the silicon lottery. So I can't really test if this is an extremely good overclocking board or not. Uh, though the other two departments, really good. So phenomenal and I'd, so I'd like to see them maybe change up the naming a little bit like MSI did with the Z87 Gaming that made me hey research the board and say okay this is better than the previous generation uh, sticking with the same naming all the time you're sort of saying okay this is this this is this and this is this and it's going to continue on this way like we've got a good onboard audio solution next gen we've got good though with the Extreme 6 clearly this time you've got a phenomenal onboard audio solution so let that be known with a different name and make people like myself research it. So anyway, guys, that being said, there's not a lot more about this board. It works. So if you guys want a motherboard that just simply works and is not going to give you headaches, then go get yourself an X99 Extreme 4 and Extreme 6 from ASRock because it, it just works. For me, I'm headache free now when I use and when I overclock with my motherboard. So really good job there. Everything else, I mean, the feel of the board, it felt solid. The utility and the functionality of this board, really good as well. So kudos to you guys for making a really good motherboard. And if you have any feedback or if you have any comments about this motherboard, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys with another tech video very soon. Uh, as for the price, I think it comes in at around about 350 in Australia and Japan. I think it's under $300. I think it's around about 280 in the US. So at that price, it's a really good board. I mean, the Extreme 4 is even cheaper. Uh, I think it doesn't have the dual NIC, uh, though, it, yeah, maybe the minus the buttons as well. But honestly, the same core uh, utility and functionality, the same awesome onboard audio solution is still there as well. So uh, Extreme 4 or the Extreme 6, man, these are my new X99 recommendations for motherboards. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and yeah, I'll catch you guys in another tech review very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.